thank you. Uh, thanks for joining us. We'll start out with Corey here. Uh, see, we got some hands raised, so we'll go one at a time, one question at a time, and get through as many people as possible. We got about five-ish minutes with each of these guys. Um, so let's start out with Dan Hope from Eleven Warriors. Dan. Hey, Corey. Just wanted to ask you. Um, you know, being being a walk-on and being somebody who's you know now entering your your second year in the program, just uh, you know, what's it what's it like? You know, kind of having an opportunity to you know maybe show what you can do this spring and have a better chance to earn a little playing time. Um. It's a lot better this year compared to last year. Last year, we got caught up with COVID. Didn't necessarily have a spring ball to get out and show what I could do. But this year, now that COVID is starting to come to an end or we're getting the back back half of it, uh, we have a spring ball now. So it's good to finally get out there and try to prove myself and see what I can do. Try to find a way to get on the field. All right, let's go next to Nathan Baird, Cleveland.com. Hey, Corey, a year ago at this time, uh, Cade Stover was just making the transition into the, the tight end group. I'm just curious what sort of progress you've seen from him over the past year and why, I guess, from your perspective, that's a difficult position to maybe transition to mid-career. Uh, he's gotten a whole lot better. He just got off of uh, COVID, so he's getting back in. And I think today they had him at 75% back at it. But uh, he stepped up a lot. He's starting to get the playbook down and everything. But it is very difficult going from linebacker where you're trying to get off the blocks to tight end where you're having to make the blocks, get out on routes and catch the ball. So I think he's progressed a lot. He's come a long way. Next up, we'll go to Bill, Rabin Bill Rabinowitz. Bill? Hey, Corey, can you just kind of describe the process by which you decided to come to Ohio State? Uh, probably might have been programs where you would have been assured of, of more playing time. Um. So I wanted to go somewhere that I could get in the spring. I didn't want to wait until next fall. I kind of want to go somewhere in the spring to learn the playbook and try to prove myself. And the only two colleges that accepted in the spring was Ohio State and Florida State. And then Florida State, they just had fired uh, Willie Tabbert. I think that's his last name. And he got fired and let go. So that whole staff was going to be cleaned out. And uh, we basically just had all our marbles in a jar at Ohio State and prayed about it and Lord bless me with this opportunity. Thank you. Yes, sir. All righty, next we'll go to Austin Ward. Austin? So, Corey, you're talking about some of the maybe difficulties and challenges that you face learning this. I mean, how would you describe your comfort level in this spring compared to that uncertainty of a year ago at this time? Um, that's a great question. I, uh, I feel a lot more, I wouldn't necessarily say comfortable. I feel a lot more confident. I guess you could say is a better way to put it. Um, now that I finally have the full playbook in front of me, last year was just hectic because of COVID, obviously, and we didn't have the spring balls to go out there. I like to learn plays running through them. I can't just have a playbook in front of me and just learn it like that. So run through the plays out there this year. It's getting a lot better. And um, being around the guys a lot more and the coaching staff, a lot more, uh, I guess, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? A lot better. I'll just say that. <laughs> All right, let's go next to Joey Kaufman. Joey? Corey, when, when you had to transfer here, you went from a situation where you were on scholarship to, to having to, to walk on. Did you have just any apprehension about sort of that change um, for you? Um, not a whole lot of changes. The only thing that – only necessarily thing that changes is you got to make the most of every opportunity you get. Because a walk on, you don't really get that many opportunities to prove yourself. So you got to step up to the plate the second your name is called, and you got to make the most of it. So, all right, let's go next to Patrick Murphy. Patrick, Corey, when we talked to Coach Wilson a couple weeks ago, he said that that from watching you, there there's probably a role for you in this offense. Um, could you kind of elaborate on on what you're doing, how you're kind of fitting in with this group of tight ends? Um. I'd probably necessarily say probably close to goal line stuff, I would say, goal line and run blocking stuff. I'm more of a, a wide tight end and not necessarily an H. We got faster, lighter guys than me to get out there and move better. So more of a hand down tight end. All right, let's go next to uh, Tim May. Tim? Yeah, more of a hand down tight end. Were you looking for the word comfortable more than anything else a while ago? That, yeah, that would have helped. <laughs> it's been a been a long time since I've had an interview like this. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, one issue, though, you know, two, two quickies. Number one, uh, what is it that you have to do at that position to get on the field to play that you 
figured out over the last year? And then number two, who have you been going against on the other side of the ball that's caught your eye? I'm talking about from a pass rush standpoint or uh, just a run blocking standpoint. Who who you haven't who, – who's, uh, who's standing out as, in terms of tough to root out of there? Um, it, all, it all boils down to trusting your technique, trusting your coach, and uh, your coach – teaches you the, you know, the steps and the technique and the hands and how to shoot them. And it's all about you to finish it. It's your job to take what's, what you see on the film to the practice. And um, I would probably say, you know, the upcoming starters have stuck out a lot, you know, Tyreek and Zach Harrison, they've starting to step up a whole lot from what I would say. All righty. Last question for Corey. We'll go to Griffin Strom. Griffin. Thanks, man. Hey, Corey, I was just wondering um, how you might have seen uh, Jeremy's role in the tight end room uh, kind of change or evolve maybe as a leader um, this spring. Um, I know you, know, you guys are uh, kind of just getting underway, but, um, you know, now the guys like Luke and Jake have uh, have moved on from the program. How has, has Jeremy kind of stepped up? Uh, you know, he's a leader. He's one of the best that's ever come through here. And I, we're trying to give him the ball a whole lot more. Uh, he can do a lot of great things when the ball is in his hands. So trying to get more get more throws to him, get more more routes, I guess, the route tree opened up for him. So we're starting to throw him in a lot more. Awesome. <clears throat> Thank you very much for your time, Corey. Really appreciate it. Yes. Thank you. And folks, we'll have uh, we'll have some more folks. We'll have some more guys coming out. We're expecting uh, Jeremy Ruckert, um, Mitch Rossi, uh, Cade Stover, among others. So hold on one sec.